just quickly introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Anthony. I work here at Orange County Realtors. Been here now for almost 19 years, started off in the MLS department. So I know guaranteed I'll speak to everybody regarding rules, regulations, violations, all that fun stuff. What I'm also involved with is our outreach program. Our outreach program is designed to give you training on all your tools and products. So not only do I train on MLS, but I also train on zip forms. I am zip from zip form certified. So I show agents how to put together your transactions, how to digitally sign them. And of course, all the advanced tools that zip forms does have to offer. And of course, I love training on technology. I love showing agents how they can utilize their mobile tablet devices to make their real estate lives way easier than what you guys we're used to using. And part of that is also going over how you can utilize all these technology tools that you have out there today, because there are a bazillion of them and you can get really lost in all this tech. And my job is to really help you understand some of the basics to simplify it for you to be able to easily and effortlessly um, get this going. Now, today is going to be a little mixture of presentation and of course, live. So we can show you through the steps how to live, live time put together your YouTube uh, um, channel as well as put together your Facebook business page. Now, before we get started, do I have anybody here that has not created a Facebook business page or a YouTube channel just yet? A couple of hands raised. Okay, awesome. All right, Robert, not a problem. So just real quickly, um, just go over some things here. Good, it looks like Katya's got both. Excellent, Katya. So then today what we're, we're gonna do is make sure that the channels and, and everything are set up appropriately and properly. That way you're meeting first point of contact requirements set down by DRE, as well as uh, class two today, we'll actually go over content and strategy to be a little bit more successful or to be uh, successful in this social media platform. Now. I know a lot of people go, well, what about Instagram, things like that? Really, honestly, Instagram is all well and good. It's fast and upcoming and crazy enough, Facebook does own Instagram. So really, a lot of what applies to Facebook is going to apply to Instagram as well. Uh, though my understanding is that Instagram does not have a business page section like Facebook does. But real simply, why Facebook? Number one, Facebook is the largest social media network platform out there in the world. It is actually number one with more than, as of 2020, 2.7 billion active users go on to Facebook each and every month. Now, if you think about that, if in terms of country size, the largest country in the world is what? China, right? They had over, or they have over 1.4 billion people. So Facebook has more people belong to worldwide to Facebook than they do to China, okay? With 2.74 billion. And that grew by 3.3 uh, .3 billion people last year, okay? Last year, it was a big milestone for Facebook when they hit the 2.4 billion mark. This year, beginning of this year, 2.74 billion people are actively using Facebook each and every month. So, uh, and we'll talk about why that's important in business because that's a large audience that you can connect with. 63% of Americans log on each and every day. 93% of consumers actually go online before they list or buy a property to take a look for things. So they go online and Facebook is a large part of that because of all the advertising that's got done. 62% of millennials said that they found an agent on social media and decided based on their social network that they went with that agent. Why? Because they felt that they got to know the agent personally. So um, this is where we need to start thinking in terms of connecting with people emotionally. And we'll talk a little bit about this in greater detail to be able to connect with these personalities because the whole point of social media networking is to connect with people, right? Anybody here um, with Facebook, just as a personal page, and you found people that you haven't talked to in 20, 30, 40 years sometimes, right? That's a huge number. And it's because we still want to have those connections. We still want to bond with those people. 
So this is why you as real estate agents need to have a social media presence. Number one, a large audience that you can connect with because of the amount of consumers that go online to want to connect with somebody that they can, um, can trust before making a purchase or maybe list their property, they need to feel comfortable in building that trust. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on today. More facts about Facebook. 91% of realtors do use social media, which is a good thing, but not all of them use it well. Okay. They get on, they use social media, but they forget that you know, to let people know that they are in the real estate industry. Real estate Facebook ads actually rank number seven with the average click-through rate of one of less than 1%. So out of all the Facebook types of ads that you guys get bombarded with anytime you go into Facebook, real estate ads rank number seven. And the reason why that is, is because people click on those ads less than 1% of the time. The highest number one ranked Facebook ad out there is automobile. Automobile ads rank number one. And their click-through rate is 1.02%. So really, on a, realistically, you guys aren't that far off from getting your click-through rates to be boosted up to make you guys number one. You just gotta come up with interesting ads to make people want to click on that information. And we can, again, talk about that in content strategy uh, in today's second class. Now, what makes Facebook ads so appealing to real estate is that the cost per click is about $1.81, okay? So it doesn't cost you a lot of money to get a lot of clicks. I wanna say, uh, if anybody has ever created a targeted ad, it probably cost you what, maybe about a hundred dollars, depending on the type of thing that you wanted the ad to do. And if you've ever looked at the analytics of that ad, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Now, 62% of marketers say that they, that Facebook is the most important of all social media. I want to say that that average has changed to close to 79% this year, but I'll have to double check that, check those numbers. And of course, 57% of Facebook consumers said that social media did influence their shopping habits. Probably happens to you guys all the time. You see an ad, you get reminded of something, right? Because of the ad is portraying it. What'd you do? You went out and bought it. Probably bought it on Amazon. Now, right now you can't buy houses on Amazon. Not yet, but that's something Amazon's working on. Now, here's some mind-blowing facts about YouTube, Okay. Now, and I double checked my numbers this year. Uh, this year, more than 2.4 billion unique users are on YouTube. Last year, they just hit the 2 billion mark. So inside of just one year, the amount of users watching and using YouTube increased by, point, or by 400 million people. This makes YouTube number two in the social media networking. By the way, YouTube is also number two search engine in the world compared to Google search. And crazy enough, Google both owns Google search and YouTube. So Google owns number one and number two search engine in the world. Now, why is this possible? Or what else is kind of crazy about this? 30 million visitors go to YouTube each and every day. Anybody here watch videos on YouTube? I know I do probably uh, above and beyond watching TV a lot of times. Now, 5 billion videos are watched every single day by these 30 million visitors per day. So that's a lot of video, okay? 500 hours of video are actually uploaded to YouTube every minute of every day. 1 billion hours of videos are watched, 1 billion hours of videos are watched on YouTube. And on average, the average length of a video is less than six minutes long. So that's a lot of videos that we are all consuming. Now, more than 10,000 videos have generated over 1 billion views. A lot of those were, are the funny little animals or mishaps that people have. Okay. 
Now, 70% of YouTube users watch a video to help them make a purchase decision. Now, this is something that you guys need to care about. 70% of YouTube users watched a video to help them make a purchase decision. So this means in the real estate world that people want to see a video before they actually decide on making a purchase of a property. Now, if we've got people wanting to connect with people and learning about a person's business as well as connecting with them personally, before they make that purchase decision on buying that house, they want to get to know the agent. Now, 80% of YouTube users who watched a video said that it helped them make a purchase decision or that, that made a purchase decision from a video said that they started watching videos at the beginning of their shopping process. They need to understand things. So far, anybody like those numbers? Anybody surprised by these numbers? No, no one's surprised about that one. Katya, you're not surprised about this? Excellent. Sounds like you're, you're really connected into YouTube and making videos. Is that a good assumption? Yes, excellent. Demographically, seven out of 10 people prefer actually watching video online versus TV, paying for it. It's cost. How much does it cost for you to have a Dish Network or a Direct TV? Probably what, roughly about average $150 a month? Online video is practically free. YouTube's free. You don't have to pay for a single dime. The only thing you have to pay for is internet. So $70 a month. But you're already paying $70 a month for your internet plus the $150 for your Direct TV. Think about those numbers, $150 per month over 12 months. That's roughly a little over $3,700 a year that you're just paying for TV. It's cost effective, right? Can you imagine what vacations you can go on? How much money you could save yourself if you just got rid of paid TV and just go with Netflix at $14 a month, right? Or... Disney Plus at $17 a month instead and still be able to go onto YouTube and watch how-to videos, learn how to do things electronically, how to use software, how to put together recipes. Anybody here watch those recipe videos? I know I did last year when we were all stuck at home. I got to reconnect with cooking. In an average month, eight out of 10, 18 to 49 year olds go and watch YouTube. They predict by 2025, which by the way, that's only a mere four years from now, more than half the viewers under the age of 32 will no longer subscribe to paid TV. It'll all be on the internet. Now, mobily, more than 70% of YouTube views, people watching YouTube, watching on their mobile tablet device or their phone device. Why it's easy to use, it's always there with you. So we are constantly connected. And on an average session, meaning I turn on my phone, I swipe it open, and I go to YouTube, people spend roughly about 40 to 41 minutes per session. We've all seen that. Kids at a restaurant running around like crazy little monkeys. What, what does mom and dad do? They whip out the iPad, turn on a video. My, kids get real quiet real quick. All the while, mom and, mom and dad pull out their own phones and start watching their own shows. And they never talk to each other. That's the modern family. Anybody here remember the term boob tube? Right? It was referred to TV back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Today, the phone and mobile devices are the new 21st century boob tubes. This is why people who try to take the kids away from their phones, the kids start screaming and whining. It's okay to limit them on the amount of hours that they watch TV. Now, here's something that you guys will, will like too, or find very interesting. YouTube generates ad revenue two times more from the previous year. As of 2020, 
YouTube generated in one quarter more than $3.81 billion up from the previous year. Doubled. Now, YouTube does pay people for their video views, right? So if you make a channel and you monetize it based on their algorithms, you can get paid. Now, the highest paid YouTuber was back in 2018, 2019. They were eight years old. So that makes them 10 years old today, maybe 11. But they earned $26 million from YouTube just from the amount of views on their videos. And the video that the eight-year-old was doing was what they call the unboxing. They bought something. It came to them in the mail. They recorded a video about it and gave their impressions about what they, what they bought. The highest paid YouTuber was an eight-year-old. The second highest paid YouTuber was a five-year-old at $20 million. Anybody here want to start making better videos at that point? We're adults. And here our kids are making more money than we are. We're entitled to that piece of pie. Now, I know most of us here aren't going to think about YouTube and having YouTube pay us money, but think about YouTube in the sense of if people are watching our videos, we're going to get paid at that point. So it's based on the sales that we're going to be doing. So think about that. All right. Ways to market on Facebook. You got three major things that you can do on Facebook. Uh, number one is create a Facebook business page. It's similar to your personal profile, but it's for your business. Users like your, your business page, which will send them automatic updates about any time you post something to your wall on the Facebook business page. Every realtor here should, today, and I know after today, Robert's going to make his YouTube channel or Facebook page, business page. Now, by the way, you want to make sure that when you create your Facebook business page, it's linked or it's created from your Facebook personal page. I know some agents out there have paid Facebook to have, excuse me, a Facebook pay, business page created in lieu of having a personal page. There's nothing wrong with that, but you ended up having to pay for it. Here, it's free if you have a personal page. Now, the other way to market is to create targeted ads, right? This is their targeting ad advertising platform. You create the targeted ad on a, you know, where you can hit specific geographic areas, uh, education levels, income levels, things like that. Now, this can get a little bit expensive, but that is their paid service. And, can, and of course, the other way to market on Facebook is to create social groups. Now, when it comes to social groups, what you need to think of is you're creating a party. You invite people of like minds together that you know to be able to share ideas. It's a discussion group. That's all it is. It's got some additional features that the pages and the profiles have, like, you know, a wall. You're right. But basically, people, you're pulling people together. You're the center of the party. You've pulled people of like mind together, and you have just discussions. You don't even have to discuss real estate all the time. Just discuss what's going on in the community or whatever group you want to pull together. Basket weaving, wine tasting, cheese eating, whatever. Share ideas. Now, by the way, these three marketing tools here that Facebook offers, two of the three are free, and that is the pages and the groups. So easy ways for us to be able to make money on Facebook if we just take advantage of it. All right. Now, how you can use YouTube for marketing. And this is also no different than Facebook, right? Because you should be able to, con you need to create an image of authority, right? Your business videos or things that you're posting to your wall. How would we create our own group? We can talk about how to do that, uh, Diana. Um, so give me a, just a few minutes when we start 
going over how to actually make a business page. So let's get you there first and then you can create a group. Okay. Does that help? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So when it comes to YouTube marketing, you got to create an image of authority. So your business videos are going to contain your business views and ideas. Okay. This is going to provide an aura of expertise and authority, right? Because each and every one of you attending today has a unique way of conducting your business. You see things going on in your business that you have input that you should be giving because there are other people out there just not sure who to listen to, what to talk to about, because not every agent talks about their business or what needs to be done for their business, right? Business tips and strategy videos get attention from people, right? You got to be able, you know, you're providing help and value, which is going to earn people's respect. As a viewer sees this, they're going to recognize you as a trustworthy expert for information. Okay. Now, this is also going to build credibility and trust. So you, you got to entice them with more than just a sales pitch. Remember how I was saying that 91% 90, of people are using social media, but not all of them are very good at it. And that's because the biggest thing that they do wrong, a majority of, that, of those people, it's just a sales pitch. I've got a listing for sale. I've got a listing for sale. I got a listing for sale. I got a listing for sale. How many of you just want to hear that all day long? No one. Right? Now remember, we're just as much of a consumer as anybody else. No one wants to just be pitched a sale. You got to be able to give them something that want that makes them want to build a rapport and trust with you, right? Because relationships are key. Give them a, a reason to evaluate your services, right? Credibility comes from this information. So show your customer engagement. One of those things would be a testimonial video from a client. Oops, sorry. A testimonial video from a client. Anybody here about to close escrow? Say within the next month. Hopefully, maybe one or two of you. Day you close escrow, take your phone out, ask your client, hey, I'd like to use you in my marketing. If you don't mind, would you mind speaking 30 seconds and just tell the audience or just tell me what you thought about my services? Stand back, hit the record button, and there you go. That's all you need, 30 seconds. A 30 second testimonial video is gonna have so much more impact than the written review. Indiana, not a problem. We're gonna make sure that you, this is how we're gonna to try to get you to get clients, okay? Testimonials or client testimonials are so much more meaningful because people get to see and hear other people's reactions to your business, what you've done for them. Maybe they even say something uniquely that you normally would not have advertised about yourself. That's going to have so much more written, uh, more, much more impact than the written word. As a matter of fact, it's been, it's been laid out that a one minute long video can convey what 1.8 million words can convey. So it takes the old saying, a picture says a thousand words to the nth degree. People, other people will see and hear what your clients have to say. Now, I usually see somebody ask a question, well, what happens if the client says something bad about you? Well, number one, do you use that in your marketing? Probably not. But take that video, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in the second class today, how you can take that negative and spin it into a positive. And by the way, video obviously is more engaging than the older forms of media. People enjoy watching videos. Our stats show it. If people didn't like watching videos, they wouldn't watch 5 billion hours of video each and every day. By the way, people will be able to leave feedback on your videos. Okay. So that means that if you do a video where somebody ends up asking you a question, be engaging, answer back. It shows that you're obtainable and that you're willing to connect with those personalities. 
with those people. So other people will see that question because maybe they thought about it, but didn't have the courage to ask you, but because you answered it, Hey, wow, this person is really wanting to be in touch with me or at least in touch with the people that they're reaching out to. It shows engagement and it's no different on Facebook. If somebody, if you post something on Facebook that somebody legitimately asks you a question about, answer it. Don't be afraid. How do you reach people after you have a YouTube channel and videos? Well, we'll talk about that, Martha. It's called sharing it. You got to tell people about it. You got to put those videos out there. You've got to entice people to go to your channels and subscribe. I'll show you that today. All right. Uh, let's see here. This is where we're going to leave the, the presentation, but we're going to very simply create a Facebook business page. Okay. So again, we're going to do it all from our personal page. It's really simple. You log into Facebook. You're at your personal page. You're just going to go over to the upper right corner, click the plus sign. When the drop down menu appears under create, you're going to click on create a page. Now, just to show you what I mean by this, we're going to open up my Facebook. And let's see here if I can move some stuff around so I can easily get to my page. And of course, oh, I, of course I don't have my Facebook up. So let's do that. Here, I'm just gonna go to my Facebook. So here at your personal page, okay? What we're gonna do to create a business page is that we're gonna come over here to the left-hand side. Now, if you can't see, um, the left-hand side of my screen because of my camera. At the very top of wh where you see my image, just simply click on the black uh, header, hold down with your mouse, and then move the camera over to the other side of the screen. Now you should see everything on your right-hand side. Oh, and yes, Deanna, you do see where it says group. Yes, you can go to groups. There you're going to be able to create your group. Now this is all done from your personal page. So in a way, what we're going to do is we're going to entice people from our business page to be friends on our personal page. And I'll show you how you why you want to do that. But very simply here, we're going to click on the plus sign. Now we get a drop down menu of choices here of to create. What we're now going to simply do is click on create a page. Now, when it comes to creating a page over here to the left, we need to create a page name. Now, the page name is going to be vital. This is where we need to think about first point of contact information requirements by the DRE. The DRE has advertising rules, right? Now, by any chance, does anybody know what those advertising rules are? And if you don't, very easy. Gotta have your name, gotta have your DRE license number, and has to have your official brokerage name right? Those are your three minimum requirements, right? Or at least, if not your name, your team name, like the breed group or the breed team. But if I am, don't have a team, my first point of contact stuff, business cards, things like that must have at least my name, my DRA license number, and my official company name. Logo aside. Now, this is also pertains to social media. Social media says that technically when you create a business page that it must meet all first point of requirements on not only on the business page, but on every post that you post to your wall. Now, when we create a post, Usually the business page name is part of the post. So we're gonna help meet at least two of the three requirements for our Facebook business page. And this is by the page name. This is how you should be creating your page name. Now, because I don't have a team or a group, gotta have my official legal name. Okay, what's on my DRE license? 
Some of you, if you have a nickname, because you have a very complicated legal name, then you still have to put in what your legal name is on your business page, okay? So in this case, my legal name is Anthony Breed, comma. Indicate that you're a realtor. So if you are a realtor or a real estate agent, type that in, okay? But in this case, we're all realtors here, I do believe. Realtor, space, number sign, and then your DRE license number. This is what you should be doing for your Facebook business page name. It's an immediate identifier that you're a real estate agent or a realtor, your legal name, and of course your DRE license number. Now, how do we get our company in? Well, when we go to create a post, and we'll talk about this here in just a minute after I create the post, when you go to create a post, the beginning of your post should always have your company name. And we'll talk about that. But at least if you do this, you've at least met two of your three DRE requirements. Now, if you don't know what your requirements are, okay, very easy. How do we find that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to simply go to www.dre, that's davidralphedward.ca for California, .gov. This is the state website for the Department of Real Estate. Now, from here, what we're going to do to find those advertising rules and regulations is we're going to come over here to the top right corner of that page where it says search. We're going to click and we're going to put in advertising requirements. And now we should get a whole list of fun little articles about the advertising rules. Now, awesome enough, they did actually update the real estate advertising guidelines back in August of last year. If we click on this, this is now no longer a two page side, side scrolling chart. It is actually a very deep dive into the actual requirements for the advertising rules. But if you look real quickly here, if we scroll down, compliance expectations, basic requirements, right? License required to advertise, this, that, and the other, soliciting, lease, rent, assistance for the advertising, open house signs, false, deceptive, misleading advertisements. The font size is all spelt out here. But real easy, if we come all the way down under compliant team name examples, okay? just to show you what I mean. Here, this is a compliant business card. This is a non-compliant business card. Okay. Compliant business card has the following, the team name, or in this case, the agent, the DRE license number, and of course the brokerage name. So it includes the surname of the team member, that's for the team, includes the license number of the team member, and of course, includes the responsible broker's name. If you don't have a team, then just, if you'll notice here, ignore the team. It's Jay Island, DRE license number of Hopkins Realty. This will at least try to save you $2,400 per post per violation by DRE. Okay. Now, your category, real estate. And of course, your description is your about section. Now, this is where you need to, you only have 255 characters to work with. So that means we have to be super, super descriptive, but without sounding like every other real estate agent. So we need to be, we need to make our page stand out. So uh, let's see here, realtor in the OC area. If you 
um, uh, actually, what is it? Here to, here to help with buyer and seller needs. But if you need to know where the best restaurants and surfing is, then I'm your guy. Oh. Something that makes it a little fun and, and stands out. Once you do this, then all you got to do at this point, click on the home. Now this is previewed, but you're now creating your business page. Now, some other things that we're going to do on the business page. Uh, let's see, the continue, we're going to leave. I'm going to go and jump over to my business page. Hopefully, eventually, if I can get there. There we go. All right. A couple of things as you continue on to make your business page. You put in your about section, you name your business page. Now, by the way, at this point, two extra things that you're gonna do. You're gonna have your background image and of course your profile picture. Do not be afraid to put up your profile picture. Simply click on the uh, camera icon and upload a photo of yourself. Hopefully you have an updated photo. On average, you should be updating your photos every five years anyway. Right? No different than a driver's license. Now that's your personal profile picture. Here's a big mistake that a lot of agents do with their business page. They put up in the background as a background image, just there, a picture of a property or a home or of the mountains. If I were to go to somebody's business page and I just saw the picture of the mountains, I would think right away, you work out in the boonies. This is where Let's see, below the photo, it has a spot for a username and uh, create at username. Uh, yeah, this is great for your advertising. So you can click on this and now you can say at and say, oh, let's see here. Maybe I just call myself tech Tony or tech guy. Actually, I'll do tech Tony. And why not? Why didn't you create that? Of course, it's not available. And of course, it's just not let me do it. But yeah, you can have your own quick username. So you can tell somebody, find me at the breed group on Facebook. This is great for searching for those and uh, for those group names. It wouldn't be our Instagram at info. No, it would not. This would be specifically for Facebook, but it can be found that way. But it's all about universal um, advertising of yourself, Deanna. So I would say something like the breed group or the team. So it would be at the breed team or at the breed group on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, so you can add that choice if you wanted to. Uh, more specifically back here in your background image, this would be a great opportunity for you as an agent to upload your, your business card. So now not only do I make my page name as compliant as possible with DRE, but now with my background image that I put together or I scan my business card, right? It's gonna, the scanning of my business card will have all my first point of contact data, right? Not only my name, my DRE license number and my brokerage name, but it will also have the brokerage logo and of course my phone number and my email address. So if somebody does find me on Facebook or finds my business page on Facebook, they immediately see an identifier on my Facebook business page 
of who I'm with that I'm a real estate agent and how to contact me. So I would definitely put that in as your background image. Now, by the way, when we do to create a post here, and this is only after I activate my Facebook business page, which we haven't gotten there yet. And actually I'll save that for later. Next thing that we're gonna modify over here uh, on our Facebook business page, the cover image, same as background image. Uh, yes, the background image or cover image is this section back here. This is your profile image. This is your background or, or um, yeah, this is your background or cover image that you want to edit. Um, next thing that you want to modify is over here at the page, over here to the left, you want the, oh, where is it? Settings. Oh, I'm sorry, not settings yet. Is it page? No, we're viewing the page. I want, um, you can do it from here. I guess under the page, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and under the about section here, we've got other information that we need to input in about our business page or about our business. Here, yes, we've got that description that we created, but down below, click on the pencil icon, input your phone number, how to be contacted, if you have your own personal website, www.im too cool for school or I'm too cool for real estate.com, put that in there. Okay. Also, put in your email address. So if your personal email is different from your business email, put in what that email address is. Okay. And any other page information you may need. And how you can also do that, click on edit page info here, the business page name. By the way, you can re-modify your business page name to be compliant if it's not already compliant, okay? Your categories, excuse me, real estate service, realtor, um, um, whatever else you like to, your business page to be found under when somebody does a search, okay? Now, once you've done that, now what we need to do is modify some settings before we start posting. Over here to the left-hand side, we're gonna click on settings. And I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see all this because it's really tiny on my screen. Oh, wrong, wrong button, there we go. Now, real quickly here, page visibility. This means that the page is published the first time that you're creating your business page, it's not published yet. Don't hit publish yet until you've done a couple of other settings first. Number one, is your profanity meter, okay? Set up your profanity meter to strong. What that does is it prevents people from uh, using profanity, not only for yourself, but other people. So if they were to comment about an article that you posted or a post that you're posting, they can't just drop inappropriate language, okay? So you would need to work under a code of ethic to a degree of what you will and will not tolerate being posted on your wall, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. Um, let's see here. Under translate automatically, you wanna set this to automatically or select automatically translate your business page in other languages if other people have other languages set on their computer. So as an example, 2 billion people, 2.7 billion people worldwide are accessing Facebook. So does everybody read English? No. Somebody out in Japan or, or uh, France or England, or not England, because they read English, um, it, uh, Italian or what have you. Here you can set your business page up that if somebody were to find your business page out in those other countries, your, everything that you're posting or a majority of everything you're posting is automatically translated into the appropriate language for them to be able to read. So you don't have to do anything. So come under that translate automatically section and select the box that says, show people who understand other languages automatically translate my page 
in my posts. Okay. Next is the, um, oh gosh, where is it? See, profanity filter, translate. If at the end of the day you got out of real estate, you could always remove your page here, delete it forever. Okay. Uh, if you had multiple business pages, you can merge them. So any duplicates you can now bring under your one master page, which is great. But um, here, only people who help manage my page can tag photos. Here you can allow that or not allow that. I usually don't allow people to do stuff like that because the last thing I want is having somebody um, modify something or tag me in a photo that is inappropriate. And I don't want people to see, okay? Um, and then of course, page visibility here, we take it from pay, uh, page unpublished to page published, and now we're ready to request likes, okay? Now, um, let me find, there's something else. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, page info. Oh, also under the page settings, those of you with Instagram, come down below under Instagram. You can now merge your Instagram account with your Facebook business page. So you can now easily share some of your postings from, uh, from uh, Facebook directly into your Instagram account or vice versa. Let's see, Deanna asks here, um, I've seen on other profiles that have a little R for realtor next to it. How do we... How do we do that? Um, you can go to NAR. Or I'm sorry, go to real, uh, yeah, NAR.realtor. And if you log into NAR's website, there is a way for you to download the Realtor logo um, that you can use for your advertising. You can download the logo, you can put it in your email signatures, you can do all the sorts of fun stuff like that. And I think they do have different size logos that you can use. Um, for that. Did that help, Deanna? Yes, excellent. Um, let's see here. Uh, people on other pages. Is it people on other pages? No, page roles. There we go. Page roles under settings. If you do have a team or an assistant that you wish to... Um, do things on your account in Facebook here under assign a new page role, type in the person's name and or email address, give them editing rights to your business page. You do not want to make them admin. Only you, the owner of the page should be admin. You want them at least to have edit rights. Now be careful because this means that they can post things to your business page without needing your approval. Okay. They can add photos, they can put, put posts on the walls, things like that. Some of you may be working with a social media director or a company to help you with your social media. You have to give them edit rights onto your business page. This is how you would do that. But for them to have edit rights, like your assistant or a team member, they must have at least a Facebook personal page. Okay. Now, once you've modified these settings, then you're ready to, to request likes. Now, everybody goes, well, what's the big deal about a like? Why do I need likes? Well, likes are super powerful, okay? Because you only get really one chance to do this. And honestly, you don't need to pay people to like your business page, okay? But once you do create your business page and it becomes active, the first thing that Facebook does is, would you like us to notify on your personal page because you've created from your personal page to let people know personally that you now have a business? And you wanna say yes, because what that does, it lets all your friends know on your personal page to like your business. Now that at uh, choice, you can now send that out or indicate that you now want people to try to 
like your business page. Sorry. And let me go back here. With 10 or more likes, you're, you're gonna be able to unlock things on the business page. But if your friends on your personal page like your business page, this is gonna be really good. You can always um, boost a post at that point. Uh, you can request for more likes, but again, they are paying now Facebook money to try to like your business. If you do that, you know, something, you know, at username, put it in your advertising. Take this link and put it on all your public websites, right? You know, that little Facebook icon, talk about that you have a business page. Hey, find me on, on Facebook or click the Facebook link to go to my business page to see more of my views and posts. You got to tell people about it. Okay. That's the only way you're going to get more likes. Now, the other way to get more likes is to start posting to your wall. Now, how we post to the wall is that when we go to create a post, you'll notice here that business name is always referred. So if we had you know, how I talked about before, Anthony Breed, comma, realtor, DRE license number with my DRE license number, right? So right there, we've met at least two of the three requirements. So how do we get that third requirement? When we go to write the post, we always want to begin the post with the company name. Space dash. So now when you write your post and you post to your wall on your business page, I have now met all three of my requirements, my company name and of course my name and DRE license number on every post. If you put your business name as part of your business page, right, or the, the realtor name, know this. You can only change your, 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 the business page name twice. That's it. They have a limit. And I know some of, some of you don't like, like to jump from one company to another company to another company. So be mindful of that. This is why we do not put the company name as part of the business name. Number one, we are not the broker of, the, of that company. So that really on my business page, if I'm not the broker of that company, I should not have a business page named after my company that I work for. This is why in the post, I can freely at any given time show that I was at 123 Realty, but then maybe my next company that I go to is ABC Realty. So it's easy to change a post name based on the company I'm currently working with. So the thing that's going to remain the same is my name and my DRE license number. That's not ever going to change, hopefully. Does that make sense for everybody? Any questions so far? Now, um, here on your business page, because you're the owner of the business page, here we can create the ads, boost a post. Uh, can I merge another website? My other, my other BS I have with Instagram. Um, oh, your other business. My other business I have on with Instagram. Yeah, uh, what you can do is create a Facebook business page and then under the page settings, Oops. And let me see here if I can get to that. Under the settings area, go down to Instagram and then connect your business Instagram account with your Facebook business page account. Now, what's going to be nice about this is that you can put ads on both Facebook business page and then have it go over to Instagram. Okay, if you wanted to, any messages like photos or videos, you can then immediately share to Instagram. 
because you're linking the two accounts. Did that, did that help? Yes, excellent, Martha. You're welcome. Uh, let's see here, Deanna asked, so I messed up because you mentioned to add I. The DRE number and I just updated my username by adding it in. Yeah, so under your um, page info, here under your page settings, this is where you can modify your business page. Now it does, once you've modified it, uh, the first time it does take 24 hours for it to reflect on the business page. So don't freak out that it's not changed right away. What Facebook is doing is they're going to make sure that the business page name that you're now calling it doesn't conflict with anybody else's business page that may be of the same name. This is why it's important that if you put in your name, right, that you're a realtor, number one, nobody should else have your name, but then what makes this also unique is that DRE license number. So it, it'll happen really quick. And again, you don't have to worry about changing it once you've made it like that. Okay. And of course, oh, let's see here. Also, this is the other place where we can uh, link our other accounts. So under the page info, under page settings, all the way down at the bottom, if you do have other accounts like Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, um, what else? YouTube, Line, WeChat, Pinterest, Tumblr, all these other social media platforms, just put in what your username is on those other social media platforms. So it's not just Instagram that you can now merge all these various different accounts into your Facebook business page. All right, Deanna goes, um, mine has Keller Williams on it, so I should remove it. Yes. Are you the broker of Keller Williams, Deanna? If not, I would probably take it out of your business page name. Yeah, I would take it out of your business page name just to be safe. Okay. All right, so once you start getting likes, what do you do with the likes? Now, if some of your friends or if some of your personal friends are liking your business page, that's all well and good. But what you want to look out for are things like, as you're posting, look periodically for the insights. Okay, and let me find the insights here. Insights are always good because these are basically analytics. How many people are viewing your page? If people are liking it or other people outside of your sphere of influence finding your business page, okay? Now, what's nice about this is that I can come down below, I can post or I can boost an ad or uh, boost a post if I wanted to, but what I wanna find is, And of course I have no page views, but once you start getting people to view your page or like your page, under the page likes, if you happen to click on this, you're gonna see a list of people. Now under the list of people, you can now reach out to them and ask them to be friends on your personal page. Now, I know a lot of people go, well, why do I want somebody who I don't know to be a friend of mine on my personal page? You want to remember how I said before that millennials, especially millennials, more than 50% or almost 62% said that they always went with somebody that they found on social media because they got to know them. Well, how do they get to know you, else, you know without knowing you personally, right? This is for any business person, right? Remember, we're trying to build relationships and rapport. This is where we're going to invite them to be friends on our personal page. Now, on the personal page, we now need to categorize our friends. Because not every friend is a family member, not every friend is a client, not every client 
as a buyer or a seller. So we got to create groups of people. Okay. Now, how we do that, back here on my news feed wall, I do believe it is under lists. We need to put people into lists. Basically, we're now going to be make our Facebook personal page B as a contact management system. Okay. Now, let's see here if I can find my list and maybe somebody can tell me I passed it here. Live, live, live offers. Ah, uh, oh, here we go. Friend requests, friend suggestions. Nope. That's not it. There should be a choice here. Uh, friend list. There we go. Last, last month it was list. Today it's called friends list. So what we're going to do here is we now need to create lists. So we create a list. A list that you're going to create as a seller, a buyer, a client, leasey, friends, family, right? Now, once we make these lists, we now need to put our the people that we have friended into the appropriate lists. How we do that, we click on our name at the top right corner. We now go to our friends. And now what we're going to do is we see all of our friends here. What we're going to do is click on these three dots and we're going to edit the friend list. And we're going to add them to the multiple different lists or take them away from lists. Okay. So here, what we are doing is we're adding our friends and we go through our contacts that we've made, friends, family, and of course, other people that we have requested that have liked our business page and put them into appropriate lists. Now, what's nice about this? When I'm on my personal page, when I go to write a post, you're going to see here down below under add my post or add to my post, I can click on my down arrow and I can now, or I'm sorry, not da down arrow. I can now send it to my friends list. I can pick out what friends need to see this or I can make it the post to everyone or I can put it to my seller list or my other unknown name list or whatever list I need. So now what I can do is I can control my personal friends to see what they need to see, right? I can even for my business page, post something about my business and then I can reshare it back to my personal page where I can now send it to a particular group of people. Because not every friend needs to see something about lending, but the buyers might. So my buyers list may need to see something that I posted on my business page about the lending, maybe something about refi, or maybe loan rates have gone down or gone up. So when I friend people or I request my likes to be friends, I'm going to now put them into lists and I'm now also going to put them into, or now I can post to those necessary categories. Now, this is also great for when you're monitoring your social media. And again, we'll talk about this in class two. When I'm monitoring something about social media and we're only spending just a couple of minutes a day, not having to look at for every friend, what I could do instead is display the friends lists or the lists. So here I can just go to the, the list and oh, I'm sorry, wrong thing. I can just view, uh, where is it? Most recent. There's a way to view only like um, the categories instead. Okay. 
All right. By the way, the importance of the like is that when someone likes your business page, when you post to your wall, not only do, the, do those likes see it, but it's their friends that they have will also see that post as well. And then their friends' friends. By the way, if you happen to have 500 likes, that's a potential 175,000 people that get to see your post organically just from those 500 friends liking your business page. So it's not only who you know, but it's who they know and who they know and who they know that see your posts. And this is all free, organic. Now, by the way, when you post to your wall, you got to develop some content strategy, okay? Your content strategy should be the following. Dedicate time, operate under some sort of code of conduct, which you will and will not tolerate on your, on your page or on your um, posting, okay? Track and adjust when you need to, and of course, stick with it. That's the big thing. Now, cool things to post, or cool things to post about, or cool things when you post. You have the targeted advertising ad, right? And of course, you can boost your post. Boosted post just make just displays where these things are separately. So, a targeted ad costs you a little bit more money, roughly anywhere from fifty to five hundred dollars, whatever you want to spend to have an ad do something right? Do you want to capture people? Do you want to generate leads? Do you want to generate Facebook likes? What is it that you want the ad to do? Typically, you guys are doing ads to try to capture leads, capture their information, their name, their phone number, and their email address, right? Or maybe see the property that you have for sale to maybe reach out to their realtor to now have them call you to see a property. A boosted post, can be whatever you've posted. You spend a few extra dollars and people get to see that information. Now, the placement of a targeted ad versus a boosted post differs greatly on Facebook. So a Facebook targeted ad appears in the newsfeed. And a lot of us have seen what those ads look like. And let me find an ad here. Do, 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 do. Got a lot of people posting. Um, there we go. Oh, that's a video game. A lot of those coming up lately. And again, we got uh, so. Here we go, Sideshow Collectibles. This is a targeted ad. The targeted ad appears in the middle of your newsfeed, right? You wanna learn more about it, you click on it, they capture your information. Whereas a boosted post, however, appears off to the right or left-hand side of the screen. And that usually sits there for a particular time frame, a few days, or in some cases, depending on how much money they are spending, maybe for a couple of months. So this company, 1-800-Flowers.com, put a post on their wall, and then they decide to boost that post so that they pick out a demographic, regional area, whatever, so that it appears in those people's sidebar here of an advertisement. If I were to click on it, I'd see it. Targeted ad. As I get news throughout the day, this targeted ad now gets pushed down further on the list. Are there any questions so far? All right. I don't want to forget about YouTube. YouTube is really easy. Uh, you can create it, a YouTube account in two ways. One, you can go to youtube.com, create an account, sign in. Uh, which will require you to create a Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account right now, to have a YouTube account, you need to have one. Why is that? Google owns it. Now, for those of you who already have a Gmail account and you're on Google Chrome, log into your Gmail account. Stay logged in. You'll notice here that when we open up Google Chrome, and I'm at my Google search engine here, because again, we've got 
Google that owns YouTube and Google searches. We're going to notice over here towards the top left corner next to where it says Gmail, there is an icon here that's got four or nine dots. If I click on these nine dots, I now get a whole slew of tools offered to us by Google. And by the way, these tools are all free. So these are all Google owned products that are offered to you as a real estate agent or as a Gmail user at no cost to you. One of which is YouTube. Now, technically when you create a Gmail account, you automatically have a YouTube channel already pre-created all based around your account. So now when we go to YouTube, we now get, are taken to the website here where we get to see videos, but then we're gonna notice in the upper right corner of the screen, either our initials or our profile picture. When we click on this, we are now in YouTube, we need to go to our channel. Now from here, we now need to update our channel. So for those of you needing to make a branded channel for your branded videos, very easy how we're going to do this. Go to youtube.com. If you're logged into your Gmail account, you're going to see your profile image from Gmail already established. If not, click on your initials, drop down menu appears, click on you, your channel. From here to modify things like your profile picture, your background or cover image, plus the about section, plus everything else, we're going to simply click on the button that says customize your channel. Excuse me, we're needing to do some things here. Number one, uh, under the basic information, write in your description. Now, unlike the Facebook business page, the Facebook business page description is limited to 255 characters. Here, however, on YouTube, your description of what you do for your channel, what you do for your real estate business, you're unlimited. So you can be as wordy as you need it to be, but you don't have to be that wordy. Something quick, down, dirty, and very super simple. But make it again, stand out uniquely. You don't want to sound like every other real estate agent that we know, right? Anybody that we've looked up on realtor.com, they all say the same thing. I'm a real estate agent of Orange County, LA County, Riverside County, San Bernardino County. I've been working in the business for five plus years. I work and specialize with buyers and sellers and trying to help them buy their first home, da, 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 da. Again, if you say that, what makes you any different and stand out from them? You are experts in the areas. Put in some of that information. Yes, I do specialize in working with buyers and sellers, but really I'm a local expert. If you want to know the best place to eat or surf or wine taste or go bike riding or whatever, put that in. And if, it, hey, by the way, you want to buy a house that's close by these amenities, give me a call. Now, by the way, that's under the basic info. Your background image before we clicked on the, the customized channel, sorry. Back here at your channel, click on the camera icon, upload that background image, right? Your business card, your profile picture, upload it. The channel name is gonna be limited to your Gmail account. So you're gonna be really limited to putting in your, your DRE license number. But guess what, under the basic info, that's where you're going to put in your, your DRE license number and the company that you work for. Hi, I'm a real estate agent of ABC Realty. My DRE license number is 12345678. Okay. Other things that you can also do. Oh, here in the branding. If you don't click on those icons, you can here under the branding, upload or change your photo for your profile here, as well as the banner image. Now, by the way, the banner image must be two, uh, 2,048 pixels by 1,152. So you may need to modify that image just a little bit to, in order for it to fit, okay? Also, under the branding section, you can watermark or brand your videos. 
Again, if I'm putting all this branding, this is for videos for me doing my advertising, not for MLS necessarily. What is a video watermark for? This basically brands your video. Some people like to make sure because of copyright that nobody else can use their photo, their videos. Okay. And you could use video editors to put in that watermark, but if you're not very good at, at stuff like that, like me, then have the system automatically do it for you. Simply click on change image. And if you have a, a personal logo, right? You can put that personal logo on your own video, which I would recommend. So if you have a graphic designer for your team that created your team logo, put that on your video. Your videos do not have to be branded to the company, right? You don't want to give them copyright to your, your business views or your client testimonials. That should be for you. Now, granted, you're going to put in other information in the video with your company data on it, right? Again, because of first point of contact, but you have the right to own your own copy. It does not need to be the brokerage logo. No, Deanna. Again, I would not recommend that just because you're not making videos for the company, you're making videos for you. If you happen to have one, great. Simply click on change an image, put that image in there. That way it will be transparent, but seen at the bottom corner of your video. And by the way, you can make it in the beginning or at the end, but what I personally recommend, because there are some people out there that can take the video and cut out those sections, make that logo through the entire video. That way it's fully branded to you. Okay. Now, if you do decide you want to make an unbranded channel, then you're not going to upload these images. Okay. Just so you know. Uh, no, it cannot be an animated image. I don't think, Martha. Uh, actually, can it be? No, it has to be a JPEG. The animated GIF image that you're talking about, you're probably doing in a video editor. Does that help, Martha? Like Wii Video or um, iMovie or um, Adobe After Effects? Like your tech guy animated picture? Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's not animated. But yeah, if I have a picture like that, that's still shot. When I think animation, I'm thinking of the person like waving their arms. But yes, that little tech guy that I have on my Facebook business page, I could put that here as part of my logo or in my, in my um, watermark. Yes, good. You're welcome. Um, let's see here. Over here real quick to the far right or far left, settings. Several things that we're going to modify about our settings here on our channel. Number one, how our channel is to be found. So whether they're on YouTube finding our channel or on Google trying to find our, our information, this is where we're going to put in the keywords. Now, keywords are different from um, Facebook ads, or I'm sorry, Google AdWords. Now, I can put in, these are number one, all free, and I'm not limited to the amount of words that I want to put in. So I don't have to pay anybody anything to be found. Now, if I'm using Google AdWords, sure, put those words in. Now, how do we get the words in here? Simply click in the box that says keywords and begin to type. And then hit tab. So what are gonna be some of your keywords that you're gonna be able to find your channel under? Real estate, maybe training, the state of California, your name. Now, what county you work, you know, you're in Orange County, LA County, San Bernardino County, Riverside County, Kern County, Mercedes, whatever you need to be found at. Now, when it comes to your name, anybody here ever misspell your name? Do I have anybody here that's ever had their name misspelled or mispronounced? Deanna raised her hand. Robert raised his hand, right? This is where, 
Again, we're going to have fun with this. Put in all the misspellings of your name. Here, my last name is spelled B-R-I-E-D, right? E is an elephant, D is in David. But it's constantly mispronounced as bride, breeden, broad, bard. I've been called bard. I don't know how you get A-R-D from it, R-I-E-D name. But here, put in all the misspellings of your name. That way you're almost guaranteed to always be elevated to the top of the list. Now under the advanced settings here, I want to review all my videos before it goes out. That way I can make sure that the video I'm uploading is kid friendly. Got to make sure that we're putting up child or non-child friendly content, meaning whatever videos I'm uploading, can people see it? Now, the reason why I want to keep this at let me review it and choose myself is that some videos may be very adult, meaning not, not saying foul language or anything like that, but hey, children under the age of 18 aren't buying and selling a home, so those videos may not be them, right? Or how does mom and dad, you know, get themselves prepared for buying a property? Kids don't need to know that. But if I do a community video talking about the community and what needs to, um, what community events that may be kid friendly, I want to be able to select, yes, that this video that I'm talking about the community is child friendly. So this is where I want to leave it at. I want to review the settings for every video to either say, yes, it's over the age of 18 or yes, it is under age, uh, under 18 appropriate or no, it's only over 18 appropriate. So that's one. Um, here you can link your Google AdWords account. So if you are paying for Google AdWords, you can link your account to that, which again is going to help your videos out a little bit more as well as your ch channel. Feature eligibility, you don't need to worry about these. Just make sure that these are enabled, okay? Now your upload defaults. Your upload defaults are anytime you upload a video, you want certain things to always appear like a title. Here, I like to make sure that my title always begins with 10 minute learning series. And the rest of it will be when I upload the video itself. The description of the video. I want certain things to be said constantly through every video as part of the description. And I don't wanna to have to retype it over and over again. Like what? What are some of those things? Call me today for more information, right? And then, of course, my number, 949-555-5555. Uh, DRE license number, right? Because remember, first point of contact. Every video is going to be branded with the first point of contact in at least the description. How do you need to contact me, right? Call me or email me. Okay. Put in all that common information. Also, every video I upload generally is set to the public. So everybody in the world, more than 2 billion people worldwide can find my videos and watch them. But of course, we also have tag words. How like the keywords, keywords are great for finding my channel, but I want basic words always to be, if they're ever typed in, how the video can be found, right? Again, putting my name, the county, the California real estate, right? Anything that somebody is going to type in. Now, the tag words are limited to up to 500 words. So leave yourself enough room because when you post a video and you're typing in a particular title or that video has got something particular about it, leave yourself some room to put in specifics for that video on how the video is to be found. Okay. Once you've modified these, the channel and the upload defaults, and by the way, under your advanced, you don't need to worry about anything here other than the category. Typically, what's your category of videos? They don't have one for real estate. So maybe how to or style or um, uh, 
education mostly. Okay. And then save your information. Now, once you save this information, you're now ready to upload a video to YouTube. Let's see, what's the difference between tags and keywords? Tags are for uh, Parisa. Tag words are how the video itself is to be found. Keywords is how your channel can be found. And then sometimes the keywords are great because if the word is said twice, that even elevates any video on your channel higher in the, in the list. Sorry, I hit my mic. Does that help, Parisa? Good. All right. To upload a video, very easy. To upload a video to my channel, just simply click on create. And again, we'll do this from the channel or the the um, the channel itself. So let's do this um, up here. My channel. There we go. So to upload a video from my channel, just simply come over to the top right corner, click on the little camera with the plus sign. Here I get a list of drop-down choices. Now you'll notice here you can go live just like you can do Facebook Live. Now, by the way, go live, YouTube Live was out a year to two years before Facebook Live did. Facebook just put a lot of money into advertising their, their live platform. If YouTube had done that, this would probably be even more uh, popular than the Facebook Live. But here, if we just simply go and upload a video, one that we recorded, we just simply choose upload a video. We now get the screen. Now what we can do is browse our computer for that video, find it, click on it, drag it, and place it. Now, while the video is uploading, now this is where we're going to do what we need to do to get the video out. Number one, you'll notice under the details, the title. Some of the titles already been put in. Why? Because that's my upload defaults. So the 10 minute learning series, or in this case, the Bree Group Presents. And then maybe I put in the title, 123 Main Street, Home Tour, as an example. Here under the description, describe that video. But the rest of the description has all of your branding and everything else that you had in it. Okay, the thumbnail, we get to actually pick the first shot that people see uh, or the still shot in the video. Um, audience, here is the video made for kids, yes or no. Now under more or show more here, this is where we get to add in extra tag words, right? So in this case, I'm gonna add in the tag words, one, two, three, Main Street. Uh, let's see, Irvine, California, home tour. Tab, added that group of words, right? Or maybe other words that need to be found about this particular video, like um, three bed, two bath, Irvine, cul-de-sac. Tab. Here, this is nice because again, when you're putting in certain the tag words, if somebody were to do a search either on Google or in YouTube search and they type these combination of words or part of the combination of words, now my video gets elevated to the top of the list. So my video is going to be found, whereas other people may not because they didn't put in the right keywords. So put in your keywords. And again, you're, you can have up to 500 words at no cost to you. Now, the next thing, once we've done that, we go next. The video elements, oh, whoops, there we go. The video elements, we can add in subtitle if need be. That'll get added on later on. We don't need to worry about that. We go next. Here, this checks to make sure the quality of video. Now, if you've done the video in HD, the system will automatically change it from SD to HD for you, high definition. Visibility, this is where this is important. This is where we see here, we can now make it to the public for anybody to see it, or we can make it unlisted. 
meaning no one can find it, not even the people subscribing to my channel, unless I share them the link, or I can make the video totally private. Only I and I alone, the master of my channel, can view this video. Now, when it comes to videos, you're going to hear me talk about this in class too, about consistency, putting videos consistently out there, right? Maybe you're going on vacation. The week before vacation, instead of just doing one video a month, you were able to do three or four videos while you're on vacation. But instead of uploading them all at once, what you could do is as you upload the video, you can set it to a schedule of when it's to be released and found on Facebook, or I'm sorry, on YouTube and Google. So you can now say when the, what date at what time that video is to be released and be able to be found worldwide. Now, at the end of the day, when we hit either schedule or publish, we now have a link that we can now share to all of our platforms of this video. Put it in our advertising, put, create a Facebook targeted ad, put that video link in the targeted ad so people can watch the video. That's how easy this can be. Are there any questions on this? What about languages? Languages, um, you can um, request that with languages, um, can the video be translated into other languages, like the subtitles? Um, a lot of that all pertains to either A, you creating the subtitle, or B, um, somebody else out there in the world making the subtitles for you. Um, so you, you can do that. If you speak a different language outside of English, you can then say under languages, what languages you speak or this video can be heard in. Typically a video is only, it's not gonna have the dual audio unless you set it up that way. But even then you're gonna have one master audio over another. Does that help Deanna? Typically we're all about speaking English. Uh, if you do speak dual languages and you make a video in a, in a secondary language, you can then say what language this video is in, which is going to be nice. All right. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, let's see here. Um, analytics. Last thing we'll talk about is analyzing the analytics of your videos. Okay, what you're going to do is this is going to help you understand what people are, uh, how people are viewing your videos, how long they're viewing them, um, if they're liking them, uh, what countries they're viewing your videos in. This is all going to be really important for you, especially in class two, because this is going to determine which videos are viewed the most and the videos that get viewed the most, you, typically you're going to do more of. Okay. So back here under my channel, if I go to my analytics, here I get to see that my channel got 1,118 views in the past 28 days. Here, people have watched more than 234 minutes of my videos. I got 18 subscribers in the past 28 days, which is great. So out of 18, I, I do currently have, or I should say out of 580 subscribers, 18 of them are pretty brand new or joined within the past month, okay? Here I get to see what videos got viewed the most. So my top three videos is are my Zip Forms 101 Basic, how to set up your showing appointments using showing time, and of course, how to use Glide for, for the PEED. Okay, and this, by the way, is all in a month. Here we get to see a, a nice little dive down into the videos themselves. So here we've got 500 views within the past month. On average, people are watching about 10 minutes of a one hour long video that was done three years ago, which is one of the reasons why I never take down my videos. Uh, here we've got a total of 328 views. Um, since, you know, and they are watching 
three point five uh, five three minutes of a video, which is great. So we get to see all this. My reach. I've got twenty four thousand people uh, reaching out. Um, impressions, views, unique viewers. The traffic source directly from a YouTube search is number one at 43%. So people are actually going onto YouTube to look for me. Uh, suggested videos. So if other people are watching videos that are very similar to mine, mine, my views are coming from videos that are being suggested by YouTube based on what they're watching. External would be from an actual Google search itself. Okay. Here we go, 68% of the traffic external sources, that external one here, are all coming from a Google search. Remember, Google owns number one and number two search engine. So here people are doing a Google search under my name, Tony Breed, and finding me 70% of the time from a Google search. So that's kind of, these are all kind of neat things for you as a, as a, person doing video or social media marketing would want to look at. Here are your engagement. And of course, the audience, where my audience is coming from. Here we see um, some of my video or most of my videos don't have subtitles, but some do. Um, let's see here, geographically, 84% of, of my videos are viewed in the United States. So where else are they viewing them at? This used to give me the other countries as well, which I don't see. So there you go. Um, are there any questions on this? Analytics. So our main account will be our realtor account. Uh, yes, Deanna. Um, I think I missed where you said you can create a separate unbranded account. Well, your, your main realtor account is going to be branded, okay? If you are going to create an unbranded YouTube channel, and again, being a, a Google member, you can create as many channels as you want. How you do that is that when you come over here to your, um, uh, to that upper right-hand corner in YouTube, after you go to your channel, where you get to see this, down below, click on your image again, get a drop down menu again. From here, what you're going to now do is choose settings. Now under settings, under your account, you can now create a new channel. Now when you create a new channel, you're going to name it, okay? So maybe you name it, um, you know, as an example, uh, Irvine community videos or um, Elisa Viejo community videos or something that hopefully will be unique. Now, once you create it, then in your setup, you're not going to have any branding on it. Okay. And what I mean by that, excuse me, what I mean by that is that once you create that channel and you go to that channel settings, it's not gonna have a profile picture. It's not gonna have a background image, okay? Even under the general settings, you're going to put this channel. Uh, let's see here, we got basic information, uh, no branding whatsoever on anything because an unbranded channel is that, it's gonna have no branding on it. But more importantly, under the settings, under the channel, Remember how we made it um, public? And where is that here? Um, no one's gonna find this. Oh, where is it? I know that there's a... Do, do, do. do they take it away? I hope they didn't take it away. Um, 
I want to say, I thought it used to be under the channel itself. Um, let's just double check under the, uh, here we go. Um, let's see, do not automatically show my potential inappropriate words, subscribers. Here you're going to not allow anybody to subscribe, but um, permissions, community. There is a way to make it unlisted. So basically your channel that you're creating, your unbranded channel will be unlisted and every video that you're putting on there will be unlisted. So what you would do is when you're making the video, you won't have any company data. You won't even have your face or any image or any information on that video. So if you're making a property video of a home and you've got the one, two, three main street and Irvine, you know, you've got that, that's it, right? You don't need to say anything else. Um, let's see here. Deanna asks also, um, how do we create separate sections like best practices for open houses, info on disclosures, et cetera? So you're not going to create channels for that. That's all going to be under your realtor channel, your advertising, right? So in your title of your videos, just call it, you know, the breed group presents the best practices for an open house, right? Or information uh, on disclosures. And again, those are your personal business views. Maybe you talk about a couple of the contracts and what a seller needs to do or a buyer needs to look for in a disclosure, right? Would there be any reason what, why a person would create an unbranded channel? Yes, for MLS. You like to make your own videos. You don't wanna spend money for a photographer to make your own video. You make your own. You take the pictures of the property or you get the pictures done. Now you take the pictures because you've now got the ownership rights, hopefully based on the PIA from your photographer. Now you take those pictures and you make your own video. And you can now put that unbranded video on to, that's on your from your unbranded channel directly onto the MLS, which that is allowable. Sorry for so many questions, but thanks for all the answers. You're welcome, Deanna. I know that this class tip, uh, typically is meant to go to twelve thirty, so hopefully I'm not. You know, I got you guys pretty intrigued. Are there any other questions? Uh, is there a reason behind not adding the broker's name to the page? Um, because usually your YouTube channel and your business page is not owned by the broker. That is owned by you. And again, if you like with your Facebook business page, if you're only allowed to change the business page name twice, if you go to three different brokerages in a year, now all of a sudden you can't, you've now got to create a brand new page, invite brand new people or invite your likes to re like your a different business page. That's why it's easier just to have it as your name. In the video or in the post, put in the company name as part of the post, right? Or in the video, make sure all first point of contact somewhere appears either at the beginning, the middle or in the end of the video. Typically at the end and in the beginning. That way people see who you are with what company you're with and at the end of the video, how to contact you and what company you're with to be able to contact you at. That's what I would do. Did that help, Parisa? And Martha asks, uh, clarify again, my nickname can't be at the head of the business page. You can include it in the business page, but your legal name for DRE purposes must be on all first point of contact. So you can call yourself uh, Martha quotation marks Marty Garcia if you're known, you know, as a nickname Marty, right? But then you're going to be really limited to what gets displayed on the post, right? Because there's only a finite amount of characters. Because you've got to afford yourself that room to put in your DRE license number too. But if you can get away with it, sure. Just put it in quotations. Because technically a, a nickname is not your legal name. 
Did that help, Martha? You're welcome. Uh, Amen asks, or Amen asks, if you have a license, can you use it? I'm not sure what, what you mean. You should have a license if you're a real estate agent. No, LLC. Oh, your limited liability corporation license number? Well, is your LLC, are you the broker of your own office, Amen? No. So then your LLC for real estate is not applicable, right? Because you're not doing real estate business under your LLC name, right? Correct. So then in that case, for first point of contact, your LLC business license number wouldn't be helpful. You could add it if you wanted to, but then again, with the business page, there's only a finite amount of room, especially when you go to post something to your wall that will get displayed. You could probably even talk about your business on your business page, but like your limited liability. But if you're talking about, oh, this is a LLC for my tax purposes, you know, that's typically like your group name at that point. Uh, as long as it meets the DRE requirements, I'm assuming your LLC is like the, uh, your last name team or last name group, correct? Because the thing you don't want to do is give the impression that you're your own brokerage. That's why DRE has, has set it up, it is under HPI. So HPI group, remember, first point of contact per DRE says that it must have the surname of the team member, right? So you're, okay, so HPI real estate LLC would indicate that you're your own broker. So that's why I'm asking, are you your own broker? Or are you working under a broker? No, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. So yeah, you don't want to put the HPI real estate LLC because that gives impressions to people and perceptions to people that you're your own real estate brokerage, which um, that would be considered illegal and misleading and against code of ethics and all that other fun stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put in any of that on any of your marketing. Uh, let's see here. Can the brokerage hire you under your LLC? Again, um, that's something that, that they're not going to, that that's like buying that's like buying a company. You could you know do it. I mean, your 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 state license has got you as a salesperson, right? Your salesperson's license has got your thing. Now, if you've got a a, a limited liability corporation, um, and again, I I don't know the semantics about that, but. It's very clearly stated in the DRE regulations that you cannot use the term real estate as a court as a as a advertising company information unless you yourself either have a corporate license or a um, broker's license. If you're not working in the capacity of a broker or as the corporation itself, then um, then yeah, you shouldn't be advertising that. That's why I'm asking. Amen, if he's his own broker, if he's not his own broker, um, then that's the way he can't advertise that, that data. Um, Deanna, no, it just depends on where you want your, you know, technically both email accounts, if they're both with Gmail. Um, well, Gmail is owns, let's see. So if I'm reading your, 
your question right. My Gmail is under my personal email, but I have a separate business email. Does both emails, are both emails Gmail? And really you can have your personal email with your YouTube channel. You can just tell people to go to your other email address if they ever need to email you, but you could say that or write that in the description of the, of the video. So it really doesn't matter what email address you're using unless it's, it comes to your YouTube channel, then it matters. You have to have a Gmail account, whether it's for business or for personal use. Um, so where could I find, or where could I link my nursing consultant website and YouTube nursing channel? Uh, you can link them all to that one Gmail account, just create a separate channel. So uh, again, click on your, that upper right corner logo and immediately choose, um, um, let's see, we go back to our channel. From here, we click on our upper right corner. We now go to settings. From settings, add in another channel. So call the channel, you know, nursing, uh, you know, nursing 101 by Deanna. <laughs> you know, whatever you want to name the channel. And then put your nursing videos on that channel. You just have to switch the channels before you upload the videos. So it, it's really up to you. This is where I think having just one channel uh, for your multiple businesses will come into effect. So you just have the one channel, create playlists, separate them out. And then you just have one place for everybody to view all of your videos. If somebody going to that one channel goes to and sees that you have information on nursing plus real estate plus community, well, now they have a choice to go to where they need to go. Um, let's see here. Oh, right. Is because KW is with Gmail also, correct? Correct. Yeah, because uh, KW does have its own YouTube channel for their own advertisement for their offices and for their company. Uh, let's see here. That's what I was asking about playlists. Oh, okay, gotcha, Deanna. Yes, you can cl click on a playlist. That's different from a channel. A channel would have its own, you know, you can have your own logos and everything like that. You can have things found differently. You can use different keywords to find that channel, um, things like that. So um, yeah, you can create a playlist. That way anybody finding your channel can see all the different playlists that you have for the different types of videos you're doing, or they can just simply click on where it says videos and look at all of your videos. Are there any other questions? Oh, you're welcome. Uh, let's see here. Um, so I was updating on my personal channel, but I should be updating under my business Gmail account. I need to actually create one because there's not one yet. Um, you could do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you have any videos that you're uploading right now, Deanna? Or have uploaded? No? Okay. Yeah, so you're basically starting from scratch. Sure. Go to the business Gmail account that... KW created for you and then log into that account in your Google Chrome and then um, kit out your, your videos the way you want. Now, just be careful if KW creates the Gmail for you and they own that Gmail account, if you ever left that company and they shut it down, that means that your videos are shut down too. So just be mindful of that. So this is where you've got to ask yourself, Am I, you know, am I going to stay with this company for life? Because all your branding and advertising, the last thing you want is to have to start from ground zero. So I would probably leave it, if it was me personally, leave it under my personal Gmail account, create my video channel, and then share what my video channel is all about. By the way, you can share out your channel. And again, if you go under customize your channel settings, under the basic information, this channel URL, again, for all of your 
personal websites or whatever, you just put in what that channel name is. And this will now have that little, you know, create the icon on say your, your website. When they click on it, they are redirected back to your channel. So it's a great way of getting your channel name out there. Uh, let's see, I had a Facebook, but no YouTube. I will now. Awesome. Awesome. So those are, those are things. Um, are there any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Sure, I can repeat that, Martha. So the steps are, when you go to YouTube, to be able to share out your channel URL, like to your personal website, things like that, go to your channel. So click on your, your icon at the top right corner, click on your channel. From here, customize channel. From here, we're gonna go to where it says basic info. And under basic info, you got your channel URL. Now you can take this, copy it, and then paste it into your website, right? So in your website settings where you get those little icons that say what social media platforms you're on, one of which could be YouTube, paste that link into the YouTube section. And now you got your active YouTube icon on your, on your website. So if somebody clicks there, they now are accessing all of your videos that you're uploading to your channel. Let's see. Uh, yes, uh, Priya, you will be getting a recording of this session, uh, if not later today, tomorrow. That's okay. Yeah, that's why we're recording today. So you should get a copy of this today. You're welcome. How do I get, all you gotta do is just attend, attend today's meeting, which is what you've done. And you'll get a copy of today's recording. And yes, you can link other accounts to your YouTube channel. So in a way you're cross branding. So here, enter the title, Facebook business page, put in the Facebook URL. How do you know what your Facebook URL is for your business page? Go to your business page and at the very top, there's your URL for your Facebook business page. So now you're cross connecting all of your social media platforms together, make them all work for each other. So whoever finds you here, if they know that, and again, under settings and under the page info down below, link your YouTube channel to your Facebook business page. So anybody going onto Facebook knows that you have a YouTube channel here. Anybody going to YouTube also knows you have a Facebook business page. Same thing with Instagram. Instagram should be able to do the same. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Yes, they'll we'll send you the recording. Yes. You're welcome. Well, everybody, if there's no other questions, I want to thank everybody for attending today's class. If you do need to contact me or anything like that, please feel free to give, give me a call either at or at 949-586-6800. My extension is 104. Or email me at Tony T O N Y at O C A R dot O R G. Oh, and I do have a homework assignment for you. So if you're not here for this afternoon's class, what you can also do, and oh, I don't see it here, why not? Do, 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 do. Things to do. So if you're not here for this afternoon's class, because I know how busy your day is, Here's a nice little checklist, okay? So things that you've done after the class, did you set up your Facebook business page name? Write it down what it is, your YouTube channel. Did you create a new name or create a new account today? Put that in. Now in your Facebook setup, give yourself a checklist of completions. Did you do your background image? Did you do your about section? Did you set it up correctly and request likes on your YouTube channel? Did you... Do your background image, the about section.
connection, the default setups. And of course, did you post a video? That's the big one right here. Post a video. What's one video that I definitely recommend that you do? An intro video of who you are. Again, remember, people don't like to read so much, but they'll watch a video. Well, sit down in front of your camera and record a video. Take about a minute. Tops. Introduce who you are, what you do, what you do and how to contact you in case they need to get in touch with you and put it and post it on your YouTube page. Tag it, you know, things like that. Make it public. I get it. You know, we got to get over the jitters. I don't like the way I look on camera. We got to get over that. This is how clients are going to see you today. See and hear you. All right. Yes, it'll have it all even on your app. Yes, Deanna. Well, with that said, everybody, I want to thank everybody for, for coming in today. I look forward to seeing you guys at 1.30 today. If you are here for our second class, going over content and consistency on social media for both Facebook and YouTube. So some suggestions on what types of videos to make, what type of content, and how often you should be doing um, um, postings, things like that. So with that said, I want to thank everybody again.